but I, I think the, the, it takes a lot of confidence mm. to say this far and no further. Because yeah. so many of us, and I remember when I was in advertising where you'd have like clients for dough and clients for show. Mm-hmm. And, and clients who are going to be watching this are going to go, you call us names? Yes. In the same way that you call your agency names. Yeah, they right? call us names um, as well. But, but we, the clients for dough were the mm. ones where you were never going to do award-winning work. But they were Just lucrative. like, yeah, you were churning exactly. the leaflets. The clients for sure mm. were the ones where you you know you're always going to be doing amazing work. But mm. they're not exactly the most in You have money, like yeah. That. So then you just try and find the balance between the shows and the, and the dough clients. Yeah. But, but you, you try and find the balance. Here's the question for you then. How does your partnership work? Why are you a good fit for Mugondi? Why is Mugondi a good fit for you? Because remember, you're also popping another stereotype. Black women can't work together. You know what? I have to say on that stereotype that I think some man made it up so that <laughs> we, we don't work together okay. and we never discover that we're awesome okay. together. I think they're like spread, like, like just seeding it. Like, <laughs> like a virus. Oh, women, yeah, and then I like make up these examples where women fight. Mm that have nothing to do with the fact that they're two women, but, yes. you know, they're just business clashes. Yes. Like when uh, two black women are in competition. Yes. Um, sorry, like when two black women are in competition, that's always framed as like, oh, they're, they're you know, in a cat fight, as opposed to they're two uh, worthy competitors in, in a healthy game of competition, yes. which is great because, you know, iron sharpens iron, but anyway. Um, I'll more on that conspiracy later. <laughs> <laughs> but you have decided that a man started. I think he started not, this and rumor. I'm, and I'm not here to disagree with you. Yeah. Mom, and a couple of other things. Mm. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I think I, I can't speak for Mugondi, like what, what makes me a great fit for her. But I do find that we have different and complementary strengths. So when we were an art and copy team, mm that worked really well because she's a great writer and I'm a visuals person and that like that worked really well together. Also just on a personality level, I'm just more extroverted, louder, um, open to cameras and things like that. Whereas she's introverted, a lot more um, observant. So many times we'll walk away from a scenario and she has read the whole thing and I was too busy talking to actually take in so many important cues. Yeah. And so that makes our partnership work. Um, and then I think now in business, we really had a moment where we um, decided to halve the responsibilities. So just share them down the middle. So, um, you know, she would be with the responsibilities that are more fitted to her interest, her skills and her personality. Yeah. And I would take on those that are more fitted to mine. So um, that started to like make us um, a more strong team because we could go further. You know, I'm going to trust that she's going to do that piece. We'll meet, we'll discuss it where she needs an opinion and vice versa. I can get one, but we can run much, much further doing that because we've got silos of like kind of responsibility. Somebody told me that in the Middle East, you have the, sheiks and um so each like family will basically own a silo of government you know i'm not expressing an opinion of it i'm just saying yeah um but i I thought what's interesting about that is you will not bring shame to your family right or your silo because when we come back um as peers if uh you know the minerals department is terrible. Yeah. It's your, your family yeah. is terrible. It's you guys, right? So that works from an accountability perspective. Um, and we tried it out and it seemed to really, really work well. So since then, we've kind of been split. Um, and uh, I guess meeting to make each other's decisions better. That is fantastic. You know, yeah. um, as a, as a, because there's a, there's a point where as a soloist, um, mm. because people have this um, assumption that I'm this social butterfly that likes human beings and can <laughs> talk to them. Nah. Mm. Um, I'm like a force. Like I'm really yeah. good to start, but once I get going, I then get going. But in the correct <laughs> environment. That's yeah. the first one. The second one is boarding school, and I think being bullied in boarding school taught me to be my own best friend. Mm-hmm. So I truly, uh, when 
this lockdown started, I was confused by why people were losing their minds. And like, you are confused. Because you had, you you had practice. Yeah. And I thought, this is fantastic. Like, my yeah. phone's not going to ring. Nobody's going to try and call me for anything. Mm. I can have my peace and quiet. But having said that, I mean, this is year 10 where I've been an independent, right? Mm. Just life off the grid. And I'm realizing more and more that even though that is my inclination, there's always scope and magic in partnership. Absolutely. Yeah. Particularly just hearing what you've said about it's not so much the the diving up of the responsibility as much as it is the 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 nurture, mm. right? The the understanding that someone else is holding up half the sky. Right. So yeah. you don't have to hold up the sky on your own. Yeah. That sounds like a very wonderful I think it's difficult at first, you know, you like kind of want to go uh what's happening on the other side yeah. and and it's just not possible like if you're really going to hold up your to use your analogy your portion of the sky well you're probably going to have to focus on it um and like i think i've just taken that learning into my personal life as well like i'm definitely not going to be every parent the, the i'm going to do my half of the holding up and then i'm going to rely on the other person to do the other half and it's really like um it's a really like it's a boost in a sense that Mugondi trusts me to manage what I manage and and the fact that I'm giving her faith to manage what she manages it actually um I think it brings you closer as people and, otherwise and, it, and there's a fundamental yeah. respect there right? because yeah. I don't think that love can function where there is a, a void of trust like if if I don't trust and respect you, there's no way I can love you. I don't care mm. how many Hallmark cards and balloons I send you. If I don't trust and respect you, they can never love is just never gonna grow. That's true. Love. That's it's great. It's not gonna grow. Mm. So so then you get to be front of camera, she gets to be back of camera. Yeah, and um and I think I was also taking on a lot more of the things that require a f- a front of camera person. So whether it's like the creative aspect of things, um, pitching our business to clients, whatever it is that's like in my skill set and my strength is the stuff that I've been kind of running with. Yeah. And embrace it because yes. you thought I was going to forget. Because <laughs> you've just come off this high, right? Of judging mm. cat. I'm like, yeah. people, just, just cat. <laughs> so let me tell you my cat story. I want you to tell me your cat story. So, I'm working at a bank. Mm. Uh, it was red. Um, and <laughs> we work on a campaign. And the person, you know, there is some, there is, somebody once said that there's nothing more frustrating than, like, if you're a musician, to come across an unaccomplished musician because they keep thinking that they could have written that note better. You know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it, it, or a coach who thinks they would have played so much better in their day. Mm, they didn't Ronaldo try. Like, yeah. Like, okay, I'm now Ronaldo. I'm on the pitch. Yeah. Just coach me or leave me alone. Anyway, I had one of those. Um, and we we work on this campaign where for Design and Dava, actually, we create the republic of something. We fake a republic. And it's a major activation. The, there are passports. You, wow. It's interactive. Um. Mm. The more engaged you are, the more stamps you get. The more stamps you get, the more places you can travel in the world. It's linked to products. So the That's people great. in the transaction are happy. They're getting new customers. Mm. Beautiful campaign. It goes off and it wins a bronze at Cannes, right? Wow, the congratulations. Agency, the agency mm. team then writes back. They're like, yay, our campaign won. Thank you so much for trusting. Mm. Awesome. Zah kicks it upstairs, right? Because I'm on the second yeah, floor. Yeah. The people live on the eighth floor, whatever floor it was. I'm like, hello, Mr. Person. This is what just happened. Guess what the response was? What? It's a bronze. <gasps> yes. So then I sent Mr. It's a bronze. Uh, here is a link to Can. Just educate yourself. And then you can come back and tell me on Monday that it's a bronze. One, we're the only banking brand that's won a Can award. Wow, that's two, rough. I haven't been in this building for longer than two minutes. And this, this work which is the outcome of our team, is mm. going to be glory for you. Mm-hmm. But I'm just and we didn't understand, I think. I'm just going to let you go mm. home and understand what CAN is. Can mm. Just go and read up on it. But th- so that was... 
so that was it. So that was my my. How dad. dare? That was my cat. How dare? <laughs> but you see, sure. I think part of what's wonderful is when you understand your magic. To your earlier point, Kabi, we have to get to a place where we know what we're good at, mm-hmm. and should feel no shame in knowing that mm-hmm. we're good at that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm not going to shove it down your throat. Mm. But no, I'm not going to let you demote it. Absolutely. I'm not let you diminish my magic because it makes you uncomfortable or you're ignorant of the scope of it. Right? That's great. I love that. Um my uh, my granny made an analogy about that recently and she said um you know there was a I, I've forgotten the exact names but it was a brand of clothing that was really well refined and it was like they made amazing products and um it was an imported brand. Yeah. And um, at the time, there was a, another brand also imported, not that great attention to detail, but more widely recognized. Yeah. And so somebody um, tried to call out the person that was wearing the other brand saying, like, what are you even wearing? What is that word yeah. on your shoes, for example? Not knowing. That that's actually the better brand. Yeah, that's yeah. actually the better brand. So that happens a lot when people don't know. They don't have context, and then they go, oh, well, it's a bronze. That's scary. And it's fantastic, though, because in that mm-hmm. moment, they out themselves. Mm-hmm. So then you know what you're dealing with. You're yeah. like, oh, I'm dealing with ignorance. Like, yes. Oh, that's fine. I can yeah. ignore you. Like, keep it moving. So sure. don't try and distract me. Back to Can. So tell can, me, yeah, where can. are you when you get the news, and what does it feel like judging I was, I was at home. I mean, we've been working for, from home, so I was home. And I was so excited because I, I think I just had a really tough day. So, you know, that feeling when you like are holding back tears and then someone says, what's wrong? And then the <laughs> autoworks come bursting out. I think I had a similar feeling because it was like a really tough, like walking uphill kind of day. Um, and then I got like a bit of good news. So I just like, kind of descended into tears like, oh, I'm so surprised. Um, so that was great. Um, and then the experience itself, of course, was amazing. And I would have preferred to like be in the south, the French Riviera, yeah, yes, in the south yes, of France. Yes, but yes. Um, unfortunately, it was in my living room. But so then, can you carry over this this voucher I hope so. for next year? I really, really, really hope you know, so. Last year, I judged <laughs> I never on my came. couch. You owe me a trip. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. Sure, it would be incredible. But um even judging from home like the level of insight because you kind of become immersed in the world of the work like you're sitting through you know hundreds of entries and then looking at them with rigor discussing their merits sometimes you're like kind of um, speaking up for a piece of work and uh, making sure that people appreciate what it is so it was very interesting to see what the industry has been doing over the past like year and a half was the work very mm. COVID focused? What was the some flavor? of it was? Um, there was a kind of a healthy dose of like pandemic reactive work. Um, some of the most iconic pieces being the um, "Courage is Beautiful" piece by Dove that with the um, yes. mask yes. marks. Yes. Um, that was incredible. There were a lot of other pieces that did not relate to the pandemic purely because they were actually done in 2019. Okay. So we judged two years of work okay. in one round. So Moldy Whopper, I'm sure you would have seen yeah, the work. See um, it was from Burger King and they photographed their Whopper, which is their flagship oh, burger. Oh, and they let it rot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I mean, that's so brave because they're making a poignant statement, right? If your food doesn't go through the natural process of dying... Then it's not it's natural. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be inside <laughs> your body for like... Um, so so that work uh, kind of came to the top. And then Did one the of my, Heineken work go into camp? No, so that what, was released recently. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be there next year. It's okay. really beautiful. Um, my favorite piece of work is a German piece called the Tampon Book. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that. Basically, they realized that um, tampons are being taxed at a higher percentage than caviar, for example. Well, because Ridiculous. men make the rules. Ridiculous. Yeah, because like the men with the wigs. Do you remember that? Yeah, the men conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was the men with the white wigs oh. going tampons. No. Who needs that? <laughs> Tax them. <laughs> Why are they pleading? <laughs> So, um, <laughs> and then, you know, there are so many other products that are like luxury yeah. th- that are like in the same bracket as, as tampons. 
So they saw that one thing that isn't taxed as a luxury good is books. So they just created a book, which is the packaging for tampons. Oh, so nice. they were selling the tampons as books. Nice. Um, and like, obviously they packed the book with the amazing design, great writing about the whole cycle of a woman's body, all of that. And then like wedged in there is okay. your actual pack of tampons. Lovely, I love so that's that. great. But they, they also sent that, that book to some politicians um, to try and, I guess, get them to have this conversation in parliament. And then that tax was totally abolished oh, fantastic. as a result of a campaign. So, you know, really, really encouraging. And I mean, just meeting people from around the world um, who do, you know, fancy big title jobs. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great. Oh, so now you've got you've just grown your mm. circle of friends now. I, I hope so. Yeah, it was so great. So next time you start traveling again, then at least yeah, all of us different. that have the coupons yes. from this year. <laughs> that is so sweet. That's so yeah. sweet. So, um, what changes though? I mean, because I think it's wonderful when you can look at international work and go, yeah, I can see the flavor. I can see what's amazing. Mm -hmm. What are you noticing here in the South African scenario? Like, what are you noticing with clients? What are you noticing with like, are we seeing more brave work? Are we mm, seeing sure. repetitive work? Because as an outsider, I mean, I don't consume as much advertising as I used to. Mm. I am concerned about the reductiveness. Like, mm. I, I feel that one piece of work is fantastic and then it just gets emulated so many thousand times that it, it, yeah. it just loses the magic. What What's missing or what am I missing? I think we do have like a bit of a bravery issue in our market at this moment. And I think it might be because um, people are like really holding back budgets. You know, we've had a lot of financial impact um, due to the pandemic. Even before that, mm -hmm. budgets were kind of shrinking. Um, but I think, you know, money is no excuse not to um, do incredible work. I think when you don't have money, you have to do more, more incredible work, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, but I think people would rather go for something tested. So, you know, show me something that one it can and we'll just emulate that. As opposed to show me the, something that one it can inspire me to like open my mind and yeah. um, do something equally brave, but not exactly the same. I think about that quite a lot because I, I don't know where um, the problem starts and how it can be remedied. I know that the creative um, community, like from an agency side, are still very invested in doing good groundbreaking work, yeah. which is what you see in um, the work that agencies produce proactively yes. and take that to client was never briefed. Mm. They have to kind of pay for some of it, fight the good fight um, and get the work made. Mm. And then um, on the back of that, possibly then get praise from their own clients after it's gone to like, Yes. you know, another country to get praise. There was some interesting work at Cannes from South Africa, which was good. It was encouraging. Um, but I, I do think there's like a real kind of like um, shrinking in the bravery that the industry is able to display. Um, and I, I think that'll have adverse results for sure because um, the good brand work is built over time, like consistently doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we have sometimes in conversations, clients will go, um, you know, we want the people to, to think of our brand like, you know, they just, if you, you even remove the label of a Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. people know what it is. Or if you um, talk about I'm loving it, people know that that's McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, decades years, of work. Years of money. Consistently uh, banking on yeah. I'm loving it as a property, yeah. banking on the arches, yeah. all of that um, over a long time. Many beautiful campaigns really pushing that message. So I don't know, like, I don't know where the break in transmission is. <laughs> but we do, we are sitting with a problem. Like each week when we're presenting work, I'm, I'm asking myself, like, what is stopping this work from actually reaching the streets? Because we do, you know, we do see good work in agencies. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Something because for me I, to I, think about. I, I also think another thing for us, just for, for, for marketers to think about stuff. Mm. So um, you and I, at, a, at another point, I was saying to you that I'm done dealing with CMOs. And you said to me, oh, no, Zaz, I really <laughs> am, I'm, yeah. I'm just done. And, and, and I think part of it is because 
I'm encountering so many people who are very KPA focused. Right? Mm-hmm. So it is, I will only do this work if it's linked to the things I'm being measured on this year. Right? So mm-hmm. if my bonus is linked to these stats, then that's all I'm going to think about. Whereas mm-hmm. my brain doesn't function in quarterly ways. My brain functions in sustainability and, and stewardship. Like what will your business look like in five years, in 10 years? And how are you integrating your business into the way communities thrive and create a living? But she's not interested in that because mm-hmm. that's too far. One, she may have left the job and moved on to another one. So why is she going to try and invest in the future that you won't benefit from? Mm-hmm. Which I think is a is an unfortunate thing because there needs to be a balancing act. There needs to be a, how do we solve for today in ways that answer for tomorrow as well? Mm. Instead of just saying, how do we solve for today? End of story, period. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of a talk I saw by the chief marketer at Burger King, actually, mm. um, for Fernando. Um, he was talking about the fact that a lot of marketers don't do good work because they're stuck in that KPI loop, um, because marketers, I think, might be getting treated a little bit like um, soccer coaches. Mm. So if we lose a game, fire the coach, you know, not give the coach more time with the team Mm. to get it right, to get a report, actually build this team out. Mm. Um, So then they are responsive Mm. um, because they're afraid, if this quarter doesn't go well, I will be fired. Um, And he said he's been fired so many times that he just has no fear of being yes. fired anymore. Yeah. That whole monster, it's yeah. like, I'm going to do the right thing because even if I do the thing that I think will not get me fired, I might yes. still be fired. fired. So, so I might so, as well just bet on myself. Yeah, and he was like, that's what makes him then bold enough to give agencies the leeway to do the work awesome. um, that they are doing. But it's true. I mean, especially in South Africa, the turnaround in marketing departments the turnover is what I mean, um, is like, you know, it's quite alarming. So I think maybe we are dealing with a bit of responsiveness. Mm. So some empathy would go a bit of a distance, but maybe we, we need to get together with our clients and discuss how can we help this, mm. you know, how can we actually service your uh, KPIs and how your board measures you, but also serve the business um, and its consumers in a sustainable way. And how can we help you create work that is legacy forming for you in the, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the time so that yeah. when you are gone, the work still breathes? Because, yeah. um, I think it was, I don't, I don't want to say Woody Allen because I don't <laughs> like him a lot right now, but it was somebody else who said mm-hmm. the best way to guarantee your legacy is by sharing something of yourself so that you mm-hmm. leave something behind. That's so amazing. So it's yeah. not, I am here, I'm going to take everything and I'm going to leave. No, it's, I'm here, I'm going to build to last. And even though I'm not here to take advantage of the shade when the tree grows, mm. and I know that when you're sitting under that shade, you go, ah, oh, Kabi planted this tree. How yeah. fantastic, right? It is fantastic. That makes me think of how individual focused our society is because exactly, I'm looking to plant the tree that's going to shade me today. Yeah, yeah that tree might be blown away. Yeah by you know the winds of literally this season yeah. but that's all i'm willing to do right? and that's why i think we like you you go to lagos which and i know the people who'll be watching this will go don't say i'm counting some on Nigeria. i lived there for three years so at least i've got permission to speak <laughs> um yeah. and how you how you come across that city and what you find are incomplete buildings like mm. one building that's incomplete next to another because everybody who comes in wants to have their own building so that they have their own name plaque at the door. Right. So I won't finish what you started because it's going to have your plaque. This this project was initiated by Nkabi Singh. So mm. no, I want to have my own building. Then I get fired halfway through my, my turn. Here. So the next person comes and they also get fired. So all you have, which is a picture for Africa and a picture for South Africa, is that we are so focused on the individual glory that mm-hmm. we never complete tasks that could actually become the tide that lifts all boats. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. And yeah, and I think we're just definitely suffering from that as Africans at the moment. But then we have to get better, right? So the work you do has mm. to continue to get better. You have to continue doing amazing work. Oh, yeah. If these clients don't like what you do, come tell me. I'm going to tell them you are missing a beat because... Yeah. 
I think th three things that you've raised. One is this idea that because you're young and the, the and you're two founders, you must therefore be cheap or mm -hmm. you're black, right? We must get that out the door. Yeah. Because excellence has no price. Right. You know that you're having an incorrect conversation when you're talking about value and someone's talking about the cost. Mm -hmm. Then already that should tell you that you are not my person. Mm -hmm. Let me love you and send you off with Jesus. Mm -hmm. The second bit is clients that give you permission to create your way get the best out of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's like for me, it really is the principle of any creative relationship like if you're going to be the patron of an artist a visual artist you don't sit there going so paint yes. you know <laughs> i'm ready i'm waiting <laughs> you never get it <laughs> you'll never get good work out of that but it's really like a struggle you know i think because we're in the applied arts and our work is in service of um brands who are very immediate results that relationship becomes strained but you know you find your brave clients who are willing to go you know what, do your thing. I'll come in and offer my skills over this uh, project and then we can work together that way. Two more things before mm -hmm. I let you go. The first one is, what's your definition of creativity? Sure, what a big question. Um, I think my definition of creativity is problem solving. Um, I see something that's not quite right or... Um, not serving up, you know, my community or myself or is not creating a positive experience and I want to create something that will uh, solve that problem. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Because we have, I think we do have to get over this idea that people think creativity is still artistic expression. Mm -hmm. Because I, I've always said that creativity is the ability to connect dots and form a picture that nobody could see. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. because that's the gift, right? And mm. that gift could be strategic creativity, it could mm. be artistic creativity, it could be performance creativity, but whichever way, that's, that's what I think is missing. I think that schools should have creativity integrated into the syllabus, not yeah. because it's a school of creativity or school of the arts, but just have creativity, three subjects actually, finance, creativity, and philosophy. Those are the three mm. things you should be learning. Because one plus one is three. We now have a calculator for that. <laughs> and big uh, yeah, they are still teaching kids one plus one. <laughs> but so it's been so lovely mm. chatting to you. It was lovely. It was a really, really right great. Right but sure. before I let you go, yeah. what does coming full circle mean for you? Mm. Yeah, another big one. Um... I think a lot of the time when like we're setting out to do something or setting out to you know begin our lives, we're looking outward. I think coming full circle is looking inward. When you're at the point where you know you've seen enough out there to know that what you need to see is actually in here. Oh wow! <laughs> Mic drop. That's wisdom right there. That's that's wisdom. Yeah. That's, I'll mm -hmm. put it on a t-shirt. Oh, I'd love that t-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> or just a t-shirt that says full circle would be great as well. <laughs> yeah. so, so I'll do a full circle t-shirt, but I'll also do um, the wisdom t-shirt because that's oh. fantastic. This idea of mm. once you've seen what's out there, you get to a point where you just want to start understanding what's in there. Mm. You know, because part of, it was on a run because many of my magical thoughts, at least the ones I think are magical, come on They're the run. They're all magical. Um, and it was about insight. Mm. You know that actually insight is correctly spelled because it's about taking sight mm -hmm. of what is in you. And if you just deconstruct the word insight. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I have never thought about it like that. And it just, it's right there. Yeah. That's great. So if we mm. use it that way, instead of just saying, here's an insight. What do you mean? Black women like dancing. How is that an insight? <laughs> they, yeah, no, that's true. I guess you, you would look differently at uh, consumer insights because you would then look for um, what consumers have offered you after looking inward. Yeah. 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 What's that hidden truth? Mm. Instead of just do, because there's a description, black people like dancing. That's a description. Mm -hmm. What's the insight? Mm -hmm. you know? And then you do the work and you do the work. But I do wow, wish you great. and your partner in absence I will go and do carry the messages just, yeah. just continued success i continue to believe in that voice okay. 
I hope this was the best hour of your week. It really so was. Trying to get a compliment out of you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I, I really do feel energized. I can go take over the world. Thank you for the conversation. And you're ready for that. Mm. So that's it, folks. Um, our conversation with Mkhabi ends here for today. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Remember to subscribe, tell a friend, share. Um, if you go into our website, which is wah, 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 as my mother says, <laughs> zagelamarotuga.com, you can sign up to our monthly edition. And we've just started actually um, inviting people to make the circle bigger by joining the ensemble. If you become a monthly member, you'll find all sorts of goodies. All of those things are available on our website. But until next time, as always, I wish you clarity and courage. Namaste.